Hey there, everyone. It's episode 63 of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, the only place to hear the best conversations about the martial arts, like today's episode, all about famed martial arts actor Donnie Yen. I'm the founder here at Whistlekick, but I'm better known as your host, Jeremy Lesniak. Whistlekick, in case you don't know, makes the world's best sparring gear and some awesome apparel and accessories for you traditional martial artists out there. I'd like to welcome our new listeners and thank all of you returning fans. If you're not familiar with our products, you can learn more about them at whistlekick.com. All of our past podcast episodes, show notes, and a lot more are at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. As we've been doing lately, today's episode also has a full transcript with lots of photos, some great videos, stuff you've probably never seen before of Donnie Yen, and some other links over on the website. So if you're listening from a computer or you get a chance to check it out later, you might want to follow along with everything that we've posted there. And while you're over there, go ahead and sign up for our newsletter. We offer exclusive content to subscribers, and it's the only place to find out about upcoming guests. Donnie Yen, as we all know, is all over Hollywood these days. Of his 69 acting credits, 22 of them are from 2010 or after. But who is he? Where did he come from? And how did he become the most sought-after martial arts actor in the U.S. in such a short time? Well, I'll tell you. Donnie Yen was born Yen Zidane in 1963 to a newspaper editor father and martial arts grandmaster mother. No surprise there, right? His mother, Bo Sim Mark, started training him when he was only four years old. His early teaching was in Chinese martial arts, but by nine, he was also learning karate. At 11, he and his family moved from Hong Kong to Boston, Massachusetts. And it was here in Boston that he not only excelled in martial arts, but he also learned to play the piano and started dancing. At 14, he dropped out of school and started practicing wushu very seriously, but also spent some time learning other martial arts from his friends and visiting their martial arts schools. Of course, even a martial arts kid that drops out of school tends to end up in rough areas, and that was exactly what was happening to young Donnie. He was part of a Chinatown gang and had quite the reputation as a street fighter. Wanting to head off any real major issues, his parents decided he should go to China for a couple years and train Wushu under the Beijing Wushu team and Master Wu Bin, the very same team and the very same coach that trained Jet Li. At 18, after his two years were finished up, he was scheduled to return to the United States, but on the way through, had to stop in Hong Kong. And it was there in Hong Kong that his life completely changed. He accidentally met action choreographer Yen Wu Ping, who had a role in Jackie Chan's success, including the film that so many of us know today, Drunken Master. Donnie Yen was offered a screen test, which he passed, and then a four-picture movie deal, which he accepted. His first role ever was as a stunt double in the movie The Miracle Fighters, while his first credited acting role was in Drunken Tai Chi in 1984, when he was only 19 years old. It wasn't until 1992 that Donnie Yen had his breakout role, where he starred opposite Jet Li in Once Upon a Time in China 2. We linked a great fight scene from that movie when we did our profile on Jet Li, episode 50, and you should check that out. The two appeared together again in the 2002 movie Hero, and we were all treated to some amazing on-screen combat. In 1995, he starred in a TV series remake of the Bruce Lee movie, Fist of Fury, playing the very same character, Shen Zhen. He played the same role again in the 2010 movie, Legend of the Fist, The Return of Shen Zhen. He's been pretty public to say that he's a big fan of Bruce Lee, and some people have even said that he considers him an idol. Now that movie had a fair amount of mixed martial arts in it, which Donnie Yen really feels is consistent with what Bruce Lee would be doing if he were alive today. It was around this time that Donnie and his girlfriend were harassed in a nightclub. And this incident was well documented by Hong Kong news channels, so we know it's true. Now, a local gang wouldn't leave them alone, so Donnie's girlfriend tried to leave the club. The gang wouldn't have it. The result? 13 members of that group went to the hospital. Sounds like one of his fight scenes, no? His first movie as a director was in 1997, when he started his own production company called Bullet Films. The first movie was called Legend of the Wolf, And Donnie Yen not only directed it, but starred, handled the action direction, had a hand in the writing, and produced it. It's not a highly regarded film, but it does seem to have quite a cult following, and the fight scenes are regarded as being top-notch. You can find it online to buy, but I couldn't find anywhere to stream it. 
despite the quality of the early works from Bullet Films, he nearly went broke. He was borrowing money from loan sharks and even from the production crew for his meals. Things looked dark, so Donnie thought he'd try his hand in Hollywood. He was cast as Jin K in the 2000 movie Highlander Endgame, which was not well received at all. Just a couple of years later, though, Yen would have the role that most feel set him on the track to American stardom, Blade Two. Now, not only did he act in the movie, but he was a fight choreographer and the martial arts coordinator. Interestingly, it was his skill as a choreographer that led to the acting for both of those films. Originally, he was simply intended to be the choreographer, but when the directors saw how good he was, they found ways to work him into the movies. I think that was a good move. When Jet Li was filming Hero in 2002, he actually went to the director and insisted that Donnie Yen be cast as the villain, Sky. Jet Li personally invited him to become part of the movie, and if you've seen it, you know how good it was. We have some video from that fight scene over on our Jet Li show notes as well. Just a year later, Donnie would have a similar honor with another famed martial arts actor when he played Jackie Chan's villain in Shanghai Nights. Not limited to movie choreography, he did the choreography for the 2004 game Animusha 3. Throughout the 2000s, Donnie Yen acted in a bunch of Hong Kong movies and was nominated for quite a few awards, even winning several of them. The movie that catapulted him into the limelight was, of course, 2008's Ip Man, the story of Yip Man, famous teacher Bruce Lee. It was his highest grossing movie as a star at that point and made him an overnight success. Well, he wasn't an overnight success. He was always already quite famous, but that was the movie that really made him a star in both Hong Kong and China. In 2011, he was invited to star in The Expendables 2, but actually rejected the offer. Later that year, he starred in a couple of comedies in Hong Kong that did very well. They're called All's Well, Ends Well, and the sequel, which is also called All's Well, Ends Well. I don't know, they do something different over there. In 2013, he was sought out to star in the sequel to Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. The producers made quite the effort to get him on board, even though he was really nervous of tackling a sequel to such a legendary movie. He was quoted as saying, The first film is already such a classic. I am afraid of the pressure, and the original cannot be surpassed. Of course, he did commit to the picture and had the chance to work with the man that discovered him so many years ago, Yen Wuping. The female lead on the film, Michelle Yeoh, has said that Donnie Yen is the fastest guy she has worked with. And if you look at her resume, she's worked with a lot of amazing people. Both Jackie Chan and Jet Li have gone on to say that he may be the best practical fighter to come out of Asian movies. In 2015, he starred in Ip Man 3, where he got to work with Mike Tyson. Now, Donnie's gone on record to say that he's a big fan of Mike Tyson and has seen all of his fights. The fight scenes got a bit intense on set, though, and Donnie broke Mike's finger. I honestly don't know who I'd have my money on if that were a real fight, but Mike has gone on record to say that if it had been real, the 5 foot 8 inch Donnie would definitely have beaten him. Of course, we have a couple more big films out of Donnie Yen that have been announced. The first, Rogue One, a Star Wars story, and the second, Triple X, The Return of Xander Cage. But he's actually said that he's done doing kung fu movies. Personally, I hope that's not true. Donnie Yen's a big fan of mixed martial arts and has said that if he didn't have a recurring shoulder injury, he would have liked to give it a try. Now, I don't know about you, but I think seeing Donnie Yen in the UFC would be a heck of a lot more fun than watching Hoist Gracie and Ken Shamrock go at it again for the, I don't know how many it's time we're up to. What's your favorite Donnie Yen movie? Did we leave one of them out that you absolutely love? Go ahead and leave us your comments on the website whistlekickmartialartsradio.com, or you can just tag us on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and Instagram, all with the username Whistlekick. If you want to be a guest for one of our Monday shows, or you know someone that has some great stories, go ahead and fill out the form on the website. And don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter so you can stay up on everything we do. You can learn more about our products at whistlekick.com, too. Since you've already listened this far, I know you like the show. So go ahead, subscribe, or download one of the great apps. We've got an app for Android and iOS, and that way you'll never miss out on one of the future shows. We bring these shows to you twice a week, and while we'd love the support of your business, the main thing we ask for is really just a review. If you're an iPhone user, give us that review over on iTunes. If you're listening in some other way, just leave us a review wherever feels appropriate. 
thank you in advance for doing that. But that's all for today. So until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.